Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. You love that doing that, don't you? There you go. Okay. G'day, fans, and welcome to another exciting episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. Here we are again, episode 21 this time. And to show how great last week was, we had all these people joining us like in the first 10 seconds. And now, as of right now, two. That's it. Everybody else has just bolted off and left, left us. So uh not very exciting <laughs> at all. But there's still plenty of... Oh, now we're up to six. That's a good thing. To, so who's going to be the first person? Good day, Michelle. Michelle's joining us from the start. She's had her nap from last week, and she's ready to party hard with the rest of us, which is the most important thing. As always, uh, we can't have a show without the lads, and I'd like to introduce my lads, Jeff and MPS. How are we tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Jeffro's face. It's like watching the White Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> This is actually uh, inspired from uh, Susie. So Susie uh, came to us a couple of weeks ago talking about wanted to talk about pop vinyl. So uh, you know, as you know, once you pop, you can't stop. Over to UPS. All righty. So this is going to be basically a. It's not even scratching the surface of what pops are and what's happening and and all that sort of stuff. It's a it's a gentle rub across the surface of pops. Uh, there's a lot to go through. We're going to go as. If you thought the other talk was long, the toy talk, this is even longer. So here we go. Pop vinyls, what are they? They're basically figures from uh, blockbuster film, classic cult series, and even video games, and more. Uh, so we'll talk about those later on. Each one is made from a, from a quality PVC, or shortened to vinyl. So PVC is polyvinyl chloride, a uh, type of plastic, and painted with a high level of detail. Uh, they have slightly cartoonish appearance with a large head and smaller body, similar to bobbleheads. Who is Funko? The company was originally founded in 1998 by Mike Becker, a T-shirt designer from... They make these words up, I reckon. Um, <laughs> so so <homie>. <laughs> In Washington. Uh, he started creating collectibles... Um, when he wanted to create a coin bank out of an American fast food icon, icon the big boy, uh, which is actually a restaurant Dags and I ate in, I think, on our second last night in the States a couple of years ago. Uh, replicas on eBay were too expensive, so he decided to create all of his own, uh, which was the moment it started. Uh, then he went on to produce other items, similar characters, eventually adding bobblehead figurines to his list of creations too, and more because Funko now does a whole different range of, um, of products. This is where it is, and this picture is thanks to Aaron. Um, don't, don't know if Aaron's on tonight at this stage, but uh, he's also supplied us with some other photos. Now, as you can see, there are some big um, big pops on the roof, um, and oh, I can't remember what the Funko character is. Funko Freddy uh, is the silver one with the crown. There you go. Oh, that's scary that I know that. Uh, now, what was the first Funko Pop? The first one unveiled... Uh, at 2010, at the San Diego Comic Con, uh, there was four. The original package of Funko Force Two. The four, first four figures produced were Batgirl. Uh... <laughs> That's well, just too good. You know, Michelle, <laughs> gentle road is gentle. Um, so the first four products, the first four figures produced were Batgirl, Green Lantern, and two variants of Batman, and they were shipped in clamshell package uh, rather than the iconic box box for which the pops are now known. Now, on the pops, you'll see on the box, and we'll get to these in a second, they have a number. Do you guys, without reading it, do you know what it means? I've tried to figure it out, and uh, I can't see the uh, the logical rhyme and reason with the numbering. Well, I found out that the pop numbers relate to the moulds they use in that series. So, oh. and I'll explain this further on later uh, in, in the presentation. Uh, so if the box is printed with a one, then it was the first mould used for that series. So when you get a, a figure and you see there's 10 or 12 different variations of it in colour and all that sort of stuff, but it looks exactly the same, it's using mould number one or whatever the, the mould number is. Um, so as it says, it's been the same pops, but it's just been painted differently. What does vaulted mean? Now, this is a term that we don't hear very often. Vaulted is when Funko ceased production of a specific design of its um, consign and consigned to the vault. Uh, very rarely, they may choose to revive a pop figure as a limited run, and these returned 
return are vaulted pop vinyl figures. Now, when they vault a pop vinyl figure, it becomes rare and eventually it goes up in price. Now, people have the app. Uh, if you've got the Funko app, you jump on there, you, you flip your box upside down, you scan the barcode and it tells you what it's actually running for at present time. Now, during the week, uh, a friend of mine, she had, she just got a flocked Big Bird six inch figure. And the day she got it, I think it cost her 20, 30 bucks, whatever it was for one of those. The next day it went up to $360. Then the day after it dropped down to 180, then it went up again. It's like watching the, um, the stock market. How many have been made? Now, this isn't a figure I can't actually find out to a current date as of last year, August 13, 2019. There were 8,366 of these little pops made, little and big. So they're not all there. That's designed, not how many have been made in total. That's just designs. So I'm guessing it's probably close to the 10,000 mark at this stage. Remembering these guys have only been doing this for about 10 years. Uh, what are the rarest pops? There are some very rare Funko figures, usually released within limited quality uh, quantities as convention exclusives. Pop vinyls, uh, well-known examples are the holographic Darth Maul, the Shadow Trooper, and Skeletor with the Black Hood, all of which had only 480 figures made. So that's the Black Hood Skeletor. Uh, Skeletor is usually purpley blue, um, but yeah, Black Hood, gold, and metallic colouring. Why? I don't know. A holographic Darth Maul actually glows in the dark as well. And the Shadow Trooper. So get a normal Stormtrooper, paint it black, and you've got your own Shadow Trooper, essentially. <clears throat> now, the rarest, we get to rarer here. However, they're even rarer than those ones. For example, the original run of Alex Delage from A Clockwork Orange was only 24 figures, uh, 12 normal, and 12 glow in the dark. So, you know, when you... If you've got either one of those, you've only got one of 24 in the world. So Hang that's on, pretty I've got a question for you. If yeah. you play Beethoven's music, does it start like like singing in the rain? <laughs> that's an in-joke <laughs> in yeah, for the movie. Yeah, the movie yeah, that. Uh, also might work in the dark too. Um, but then the rarer ones still are the metallic gold and platinum versions of Stan Lee, and only 10 of each were made. So, And these were on Stan Lee's uh, website. Uh, as for how many years ago, I, I can't recall. So there was only 20 of those made in metallic colours in total. And they would have gone for a pretty penny too, I think. All right, who has the biggest collection? Uh, Paul Scardino of Virginia has mass documented 4,475. Just a few short of you, Jeffro. Uh, <laughs> and, that was, <laughs> and that was by the end of 2018. Now, it's obviously expanded, I guess, from there. It's been two years later. Um, but yeah, still four and a half thousand. So I, I reckon he's probably got like one in two different designs. So that's a that's a fair fair call. Uh, I was trying to get some information from Go Figure during the week uh, because they have what I think is the biggest pop wall uh, for any collectible store that I've seen, and their wall is a good thirty feet across and probably twenty feet high, and that's just the wall of pops not including all the ones they've got in cabinets or on the other shelves on the other side. So, um, yeah, if you ever go to go figure, have a look. It's massive. Pops of Jeffro, this is your turn, sir. Yeah, so uh, there are so many um, pops out there that uh, I've got about 130 myself, and I thought, well, I'll just pick 10 of the, uh, the most favourite. Now, I love Alfred Hitchcock, and I love the fact that uh, – they styled this one in uh, black and white. So they occasionally do directors, um, and we've seen people like J.J. Abrahams and Guillermo de Toro and such. But uh, as soon as I saw Alfred, I said, thank you, Uncle Alfred, I'm having you. So uh, that was one of my uh, must-haves. Now the next one we've got is uh, Little Shop Horrors. Now they actually did a, um, a series of about five. They did the characters, but they also did... Uh, Audrey 2 and Baby Audrey 2. So I was very lucky to have my wonderful wife find these for me and um, I'm forever grateful that I've got a complete set, but I thought I'll just picture the uh, the two Audreys there. Next slide. There we go. Now, these are the bane of my existence. Now, these ones came out of as a convention exclusive 
and they only did 4,000 of each. So they originally came out about $30 a pop, pun intended, and it's the very next day they're on eBay for anywhere from about $100 up. So I only have uh, one. I'm biding my time to see if I can try and get a good deal on, on some of the rest. But um, uh, each Banana Splits one is generally worth uh, a minimum of about $60, anywhere up to about $100 each. Here we go. Uh, love Rocky and Bullwinkle. And I just love the sculpts on these two. I mean, they did Rocky and Bullwinkle. They did uh, Boris and Natasha there. And then they also did the movie version. So uh, Pops will go to any extreme. So at least with the movie version, we got to see Robert De Niro's uh, Fearless Leader. But this is uh, the two that uh, I picked out from the uh, the original uh, television series. And I just love, love the sculpt on these. So no moose and squirrel. That's right. Yeah, they, they did moose and squirrel, but I thought these these were the uh, the best out of the uh, the the four. Go the bad guys. Now uh, they did a whole series on the uh, Looney Tunes, and they did uh, the Bugs Bunny one. But I just thought this Elmer Fudd looks really great with the uh, the whole sort of uh, uh, opera setup. So. Um, again, just it's all about the sculpt and the the image, and I think this one's a very striking one. I love it when Elmer Fudd in the cartoon goes, "Kill the wabbit, kill the wabbit." So these ones I was super stoked to get. Now these ones were um, uh, exclusives in uh, in America, and I thought, "Ah, oh, I'm never going to get it." And then Pop Culture had a, uh, a special day for uh, one day a year. Uh, they let everyone invade their warehouse, and they also do exclusives. And these guys were part of the uh, the pop culture exclusive. So off to Geelong I went, and uh, I got the last two. And these are uh, Fred, Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble in their uh, Moose Lodge hats. Now, originally, many, many years ago, they released Fred and Barney just as they were, so I'm um, – Never going to get those. They're about $150 each. So I was very happy to get these ones, uh, and they're limited edition ones for only $25. Gigantor. This is the one that started me on the um, the, the dark path of uh, pop vinyls. I mean, you don't see Gigantor merchandise. I mean, unless you maybe pick up a few toys from the, the Japanese uh issued uh, metal toys from the 60s sort of have gigantor the space age robot as a as a toy i was like i just said i had to have it and of course as dag said once you pop you can't stop and then i saw uh things like voltron and then sort of uh, other favorite movies and televisions but this was my first one so it has to make the list hr puff and stuff who's your friend when things get tough so I love um, the fact that they're doing all these um, Croft and Hanna Barbera ones, and this is a, this is a great um, great piece. So they've done um, Kling Clang, they've done uh, Witchy Poo, HR Puff and stuff. I'm looking forward to all the rest of the characters. But what they do is they release them as convention exclusives, so they're really dragging it out. So for these ones. Um, We've had to wait two years to see those four characters. So all the rest of the characters uh, we'll hopefully see in another few years. So I'm looking forward to a Jimmy and a flute and, um, you know, Dr. Beaky and uh, all the other ones. Secret Squirrel. So uh, I just, I mean, there was also Morocco Mole, uh, the sidekick, but I thought, well, I just love the, um, as I said, just the imagery. And, um, I mean, you, you can't get collectibles for Secret Squirrel. I mean, there was a record and that was about it. So to have something tangible like this uh, is really the reason why I collect pops. I'm not a fan of pop vinyls as a general rule, but I mean, even that one looks quite good, the Secret Squirrel it, one. It does, yeah. Now, the next one we have is uh, from Wacky Races, and um, they've done quite a few out of Wacky Races. Unfortunately for me, a lot of the ones were exclusive, so they've done uh, Penelope Pitstop and they've done Peter Perfect, but because they were so limited, 
uh, you're really paying top dollar. So, uh, this one here, Sergeant Blast, is just one example. And again, it was convention exclusive, but the run was a lot bigger. And um, eventually, I'm hoping that they will get through all the uh, the wacky races uh, characters. But uh, they've done about five over the last five years. So uh, I don't know why they don't release them in one bunch or or, or such. But uh, yeah, I'm eventually sort of uh, building up my wacky races collection. Yeah, that's the thing that annoys me the most about this is you get like two or three and then the next thing you know, you've got to wait five or ten years for the next ones to come out, which is a bit sort mm. of dumb, you know, but it's how they're doing it and why they're doing it, I'm not sure. It probably um, one just boosts the demand uh, because people want to get the full set and if the full set's incomplete, then they just go start salivating, waiting for the full set to, or the rest of the full set to come out. So yeah. here's, here's a little short... Um, uh, snippet of some of the ones that are, I've got. So this is primarily a lot of the uh, uh, the Hanna-Barbera sort of cartoon ones. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's so just a bit of the icing on the old um, uh, cake there. Um, here's a question. Um, I don't know if Ange is asking this legitimately uh, or as a joke. So <laughs> I assume it's a joke. Um, well, they, they do actually do, um, and this is where uh, Funko uh, are brilliant in extracting people's uh, money because what they'll do is that they'll release uh, a variant where it, it's the same thing but just in a slightly different uh, costume or they may be, may be holding something um, uh, that's a little bit different. So, uh, uh, yeah, they will often um, come out in, in, different, uh, in different costumes. Well, uh, as I was questioned about whether licensing is the reason why they can't come out at the same time. I did think of that ads, but I would have thought you'd license the entire product rather than each character individually. But it's certainly a possibility, that's for sure. Yeah, they've released. I, I guess they, don't, they don't want to put too many uh, chickens in the one basket, as they say. So, uh, you know, um, drag yeah, it out. Do it over, um, do it fans. Of years. You know, do it over a couple of years. Release one a month or something. You know, don't like I've got an Aladdin series that I in the first series of the Aladdin figures, they didn't release Aladdin. Like, why mm. wouldn't you release the key character? You know, I'm still waiting on four different characters to come through, and who knows when or if they're ever coming. Uh, and the other one, um, uh, to all, uh, Angela's question, all pops is one character. Sometimes they do characters like Conan O'Brien's done a couple of costume ones. You know, Deadpool's mm. got some. I'll we'll show you some of those later on. Um, where he's in different sort of costumes. So they do do some of those as well. And uh, just for Col uh, Collins, uh, even I know the answer to this question, uh, no, they're all boxed. Well, they were um, quite mint in box, but there was a little incident. Maybe some of them might have been not quite so mint in box. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that one later, Jeffro. Trust me. Cool. <laughs> Move on. Okay, so that's Jeffro's collection. I've got a few of these as well. So I've got some of the He-Man ones uh, and the two figures in the middle at the back there, they're actually Funko as well. They're, I showed them ages ago. They're soda pops from Funko. So they've released all these cans of figures. Um, so you, you unscrew the top of the can and you pull the figure out and that's what you sort of get. Um, um, Jeff, FPS is a question. Uh, how much are they each? I guess, Stacey, the question is they vary in price depending on their exclusivity and how they get released. Yeah, currently, currently the the common pops are about nineteen dollars. Uh, if you're looking at a convention exclusive or a flocked one, they're about twenty five at the moment. That's from your your likes of EB Games or Zing or yeah, most retailers. Um, but yeah, if you want others, then you go to the collectible stores and you pay through the teeth. Um, oh, you're so, sorry, and Kate, man. One other question. I reckon this is actually a very interesting question from Phil about uh, why the AFL hasn't released them. Uh, don't be surprised if that's the case. At some point, they probably will, or they're thinking about it. Maybe in American footballers or American baseballers, they've got them. Maybe not in Australia so much, but uh, I'm not. Wouldn't be surprised if at some point that actually occurs. Do you agree with me, Jeffro? You're a bit of a football. Yeah, it's funny you should say that because there was a, a range of American footballers, and they sat on the shelves here in Australia for absolutely ages. So. There are some um, releases that are brought into Australia that just don't make sense, uh, whether it be an obscure television show that maybe we never got uh, or what. But, um, yeah, we did get the American footballers there for a while. So, so the, the Australian footballers, I guess, 
because it's such a small market, maybe that's probably why they don't do them. Yep. Yeah. Well, okay. they've released, yeah. Sorry. They've released American football, American basketball, and American baseball that I'm aware of. Uh, and the figures, there are like two or three different looks to the figures, like in their, their active poses, and that's really about it. So they just remark the next one with the same 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 figure, different colours, different team, and they call that the same person or the different person or, or team or whatever the case is. All right, so some of these, these are some of mine. I've got Pinky in the Brain because it's, I absolutely love Pinky in the Brain. KV, I love my KV. My Count because you can only have one. Ah, 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 <laughs> Count figure uh, and Cookie. Now, at the top of that uh, pile, you can see uh, the two Supergirls that they've released, the one from the TV show and just the general Supergirl figure. Uh, these are my Batman Pops. I've got a couple more that are still in their box, but these are the general Batman Pops. Uh, and in terms of how we collect, I put mine into um, containers I get from Daiso because they just fit. So if you've got the flat level, they fit into these containers that are about four inches tall and they fit quite well. And I've arranged mine in... Um, in 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 like the top row is all the animated series batman figures the next one are the movie ones then they're general from down to the bottom here's a question for you uh if this is from claire sports people aren't really international enough and i agree with you how much do you reckon or how popular would a roger federer uh, pop vinyl be do you think if one was released so uh yeah there's something to sort of think about and uh and one from Ange, is there a, there's a documentary on this stuff is that right fellas there is, yeah. There was a yeah. Uh, documentary about the um, the building up of the uh, the shop that uh, has all the uh, uh, the big sculpts and um, it's, it's a tourist attraction. So there was a, an hour documentary about that, and I think there was another one about how they make the um, the Funkos because I do remember uh, <laughs> they approached people like Alice Cooper to say, "Well, do you?" Do you want to have a Funko? This is what it's going to look like, and they have to sort of get the, the celebrity pre-approval and all that. So yeah, there's a couple of um, couple of documentaries out there. I reckon this is your greatest quote of all time. <laughs> like yeah, like yeah. Okay, obviously Roger, you're obviously a Nadal fan, so <laughs> we'll leave it at that. MPS continue. Um, and pops. Dags likes his pops, but there are Coco pops. So. <laughs> They're the only pops that the daggy one likes. Anyway, what the flocks? No, not Dr. Oh. Flocks, but flocked figures. Yeah, you did see that one coming, did you, Jeffro? Oh, that's terrible. That's a real dad joke. That was a very late inclusion. I'm proud, I'm proud of you. <laughs> that was a very late inclusion. It is Star Trek Day, apparently. So, what, you know, I had to chuck that one in. So, uh, pop vinyls that are flocked have the fuzzy or furry coatings that give them the interesting texture, both in their appearance and the way they feel in your hand. Now, if you want to feel something in your hand, how about a little chewy? Um, <laughs> now, it, you can't really see it from this picture. He is flocked, so he has the fur on the outside. And that's what he looks like compared to the normal chewy. So it's the same figure. And here we go, basically ripping off um, the same sort of character and just putting a coating of fur on him. Um, mm. The Star Wars ones are actual bobbleheads as well. So they actually do... Their heads do move up and down. They have the spring in there, whereas most other pops are just lodged um, not to move. So here are some of the other flocked ones you can get. As I mentioned before, Big Bird, here's a six-inch. Um, Stuffy, the six-inch. Um, if you go down the bottom, you got Yogi Bear, Scooby-Doo, and no, that's not a beaver, that's a gopher. So, and that's from the Caddyshack um, series. Uh, at the top, you've got a Boo from Aladdin, you've got the baby Ewok, you've got a Care Bear, and you've got Eeyore. And because we thought they smelt bad on the outside, they started doing a series of movie ones or movie scenes, and this was yeah. one of the ones that I thought was very cool, and I think it's coming out this year. Um, what you need to do is buy two of these. You need to rip Han off the top. You need to put the Tauntaun on the side, cut the inner belly take it all out and stick a look in there and there you go you got your other scene from empire strikes back and how hot would he be he'd be Luke Luke Wall. Wall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh by the way here's a spot i should have put in for this for this evening i i found out what yoda's surname is yoda boss no it's lahi who yoda lahi <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, I'm going to cut the other, if the jokes don't get better. <laughs> some of the other, they don't. You should know that by now. Some of the other movie ones they've got are Batman and Joker on the um, uh, oh. surfboard. Um, Batman versus Penguin. Uh, some of the Marvel ones you've got Hulk versus the Hulk Smasher and Red Skull versus Cap from the Marvel films. Some of the Star Wars ones. You've got Who Shoots First, Han or Greedo. Uh, you've got Luke and Leia down the bottom trying to get out of the um, uh, trash compactor. And you've got what I think are a really bit sort of weird where you've got these bobbleheads coming out of figures. Now, we'll get to this later on because there's a stack more of these. Uh, but I do like the, the Slave 1 and the Boba Fett. It's kind of cool. But what's the problem with it? It reminds um, me of a KFC toy that I bought about 20 years ago. Yeah. The problem is that the, the um, Slave 1 doesn't fly like that. True. Uh -huh. Slave 1 flies the other way. So they've actually mucked up mm. that one. So go and buy it and then let's tell them they've mucked up so it's a collectible. And then they uh, release it and it ends up being worth, being worth a fortune. So anyway, continue on. Some of the other movie scenes, the Ghostbusters range, which are kind of fun. Um, who doesn't like to be slimed? Um, and if you really want to, I'm sure you can move the, the two top ones and cross the streams just for some fun, see what really Hang happens. On. Is the Slimer itself actually like a, a flocker or whatever you call it where you can actually feel the texture? That'd be different, wouldn't it? No, nah, no, he, I think, is just metallic green. So Yeah, not unless you want to sneeze over it, Dags. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you can just go buy yourself some slime from the toy shop. Indeed. Now, here's an interesting one. So movie scenes mm -hmm. from, from from this and the next slide sure. will prove that you can never get these as actual action figures. These would never have, have been allowed back in the day or even till probably five or ten years ago because they would be considered uh, too hardcore, too much, or just bad taste. But you make no, it a bad, uh, uh, bad taste. Bad taste. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it out because he thought he tasted something funny. Um, yeah. So you can actually have blood on, on some of these characters, which is a bit sort of strange. I saw this the first time mm. and thought this was a bit weird and a little bit maybe hardcore, but for some reason it is okay. Yeah. There's um, there's one from the Ash versus the Evil Dead where you can get one without the splatter and one with the splatter. Like yeah, it is the hard one, yeah, which I think is a little bit hardcore, to be honest with you. I think it's a little bit much. Um, because you would never sell this as a six inch or 12 inch figure with the blood spatter, so I don't know, I'm not sure about those ones. Um, I like this one from uh, about the Jaws one, gonna need a bigger pop, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> cute. <laughs> um, and so, pops in cars or or transport. So, the one I showed you the, recently uh, that I got was, was Battle Cat and He Man, which is the very first picture. He's very cool, I've got to say. Um, and all the Batmobiles, you got Mr. T in the A-Team van and Wonder Woman in the Invisible Jet. Now, the two questions you're going to ask, um, first of all, you could have saved a lot of money on the Invisible Jet and just had Wonder Woman in mid-air because you wouldn't have seen it. And for those who are asking why there are different colored Batmobiles, that's because they released several different colored Batmobiles, the red, the gold, the blue over in Japan in the late mm -hmm. 60s, early 70s. And they became iconic, so that's why you have those different cars in the Batmobiles. Um, um, I just, you're talking about car. I didn't know they did cars actually, and this goes right back to a comment that Carol made earlier about releasing Formula One pops, both the cars and the drivers. At the time, I thought, oh, they couldn't do the cars, but actually, they probably can now. So maybe oh, yeah. it's a licensing thing, uh, Carol. I don't know, but yeah, clearly, it is possible. So just you yeah. never know. Well, the I cars think they're just sticking with the character ones, really. So. I've got Speed Racer, I've got um, James Bond car, I've got uh, Ecto-1, and I've got the Batmobile. Well, yeah. this is actually hard back to what Colin said about pops aimed more for the popular, I suppose it could be where the name comes from, the popular culture thing rather than yeah. sports people. So, uh, But yeah, that was an interesting one. So sorry for cutting you off MPS, but I just want to chuck that in there. All right, go for it. And look, there's a few more Batmobiles as well. I think there's one from the comic books, The Look. Um, you've got like Daryl from The Walking Dead on his bike. You've got a couple of Deadpools with different looking trucks. You've got the two Wacky Racers um, 
uh, double zeros with Dick Dastley and Muttley because the Dick Dastley is the mm -hmm. variant, being the metallic sort of colour. Um, you got Marvin the Martian in his little space rocket. And as complex as it gets, the Mad Max car from the new Mad Max film, um, that's actually quite uh, impressive. And again, it wouldn't have been an action figure back in the day. You wouldn't have had a car like that with one of those characters stuck to the front of the bonnet. They would have just seen that as too much. Um, and you also have Colson in his convertible Corvette. Now, who doesn't want 10 inches? That's just a question we have to ask. So. And what I'm referring to is 10 inches of hard plastic. Again, this is a pop vinyl. Now, these are obviously larger scale figures than the, the normal figures, which are three inches tall. So you've got three, six, and I'll show you the range shortly. But here are some of the ones that I think are quite interesting. You've got a Groot that is life size. So you could just have him and put him in the kitchen and just go, I am Groot. Put him in the lounge room and go, I am Groot. You know, you could just move him around because at 10 inches, he's actually life size to the character in the film. Yes, dude. I thought at the time when you said he's life size, I was like, that can't be right. The dude's like 12 feet tall. And then I realized that's the baby Groot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got that. Yep. Uh, Chucky at 10 inches is also. Um, that's a lot of Chucky. Hey? That's a lot of Chucky. A lot of Chucky. 10 inches of Chucky. I was speaking of the devil. Um, the Child is a new release that came out early this year. The Paul right. and <laughs> the Wicked Snow. <laughs> yeah. That's a big call. That's a big call. Uh, yeah. So these have come out. And these are kind of cool, I think, at that size because apart from the, the child's ears, they're all a reasonable sort of size. Um, the Skeletor, he's quite interesting. He's only one they've made. They haven't done a He-Man in it, which is I feel really weird that they've done the villain and not the, the main character. Uh, and what I think is yet to come out is The Mandalorian and The Child, which may come out with Season 2 when that comes out. But that looks very cool, The Mandalorian one. So, um, yeah, and you have The Child in at that size. Now, if you've noticed the figures, you see that they have all black eyes. Now, that's their style. I think it little, looks a little weird. What do you think, Jeffro? I mean, I, I'm not consciously really sort of picked up on that. So, um, yeah, once you actually point it out, you sort of think, yeah, those dead soulless eyes. But uh, I guess because they're round and cartoonish, you sort of um, you see beyond it. Would this be better? <clears throat> yeah, I think or, probably uh, that makes sense. Or maybe this for Odie because, you know, Odie's Odie. So... <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we go with the mickey mouse eyes what do you think does that not look not look creepy or, or what someone yeah, put yeah. time in their hands yeah there. looks looks <laughs> like he's got windscreen wipers <laughs> <laughs> all right the sad but cute range now i'm going to pause for a second because like we said before, there's 8,000, possibly 10,000 of these right now. So I, I had to actually pick out from a range. Um, and it was hard because there was so many to choose from. So um, these are not all the sad but cute, but these are sad and cute in the sense that it's cute that you got a, a six-inch Wampa uh, and a three-inch Luke, but it's sad that his hands come off. But I like the packaging. If you have a look at the packaging on the left, Luke's actually upside down. Mm, it's clever. Yeah, but if you turn the box up the right way, then he's the right way up. So um, another one, it's Jabba, but he actually looks like a cute Jabba, doesn't he? He doesn't look all mean and... and oh, 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 oh. He looks more Jabba. playful. Like, yeah. Like, you know, Satius Crumb looks a bit more creepy, but, um, you know, it looks like a, a happy family portrait. Mm. Some of the other sad but cute, you've got uh, Sloth from the Goonies. Uh, I'm just waiting for them to do a um, – uh, oh, I've got a picture in the, of the film and I can't think what it is. I'll come back to it. Uh, you've got one of the bad guys from, from um, Die Hard, which I believe there was also a version of that where they mucked up the printing and the T-shirt is printed upside down. So if you've got one of those, it's a bit more rare. Um, and you've got the, the Ghostbusters that have been – um marshmallowed and here are the just cute ones you know you've got jim henson with uh ernie and jim henson with kermit 
Um, you've got Tigger, you've got Super Grover, Deadpool on his little scooter, uh, a Chewy with a Porg, you've got Toothless, and you've got Groot in the bowl. Actually, the Groot's pretty good. The, the Groot ones actually work out well. Um, and I'll get to this in a, in a second. These I saw, I've never seen these before, so I don't know where or when or if they've come and gone or whatever the case is, but they're girls in the monster series. So Frankie Stein, Draculaura, Claudine Wolf, and Cleo Denial. And I actually think they're kind of cute. Thank you. In a weird sort of sense. There's my few, Jeffro. He's got to be cute, doesn't he? Mm, yeah. I would like ten inches of Godzilla sitting on your desk. <laughs> yeah, that was one that as soon as I saw it came out, I had to have. So uh, yeah, but uh, the only other six inch I've got is the uh, the TARDIS and Godzilla. So I've only collected the two. Mm. Well, it's a shame it doesn't say Godzilla. Godzilla. And, and we know with the TARDIS, even though it's only six inches, it's definitely bigger on the inside, as we all know. <laughs> yeah. Now, we talked about ugly action figures a couple of weeks ago, and here are two ugly action figures. I'm going to start with the R2 unit. It should be a, an oval dome, not a squared-off, badly-made um, cake-looking dome. So Actually, all those are... the, the R2 unit, if you're in the box version, if, uh, if Jeff Farrell will agree with me on this, it actually looks a little bit like old Bob from uh, Black Hole. Yeah, actually, you're right, yeah, yeah sort of with the head shape. Yep. Yeah. I don't know the why color. they... I don't know why they mucked those up. And as for the Royal Guard, it's the only Royal Guard I don't have in my collection on purpose because I think the damn thing is ugly as. Um, and I just I couldn't stand the sight of it, so it was not going in. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have got it, put it in the left in the box, and just turned the box around. That would have been much better. Who says you can't put a Royal Guard in the corner? But here are some of the ones that work, and mostly they're droids. So the Chopper from Rebels, he works. Uh, the IG-11 unit works, and if you really wanted to, this is the time you could get 88 of them and actually call them different IG numbers if you wanted to, so you could have a collection of IGs. Uh, K2SO and uh, Grievous, and Grievous actually looks kind of cool. A um, bit cutesy, so if they did, did like a cartoon kids version, you know, like a Muppet Babies version of Star Wars, that would actually probably be the, the best design for him. Uh, it's the chase, not the chaser. So from Forbidden Planet, if I recall correctly, and Dags, you know this better than anyone on this panel, um, this was a black and white film, was it not? No. Nah. Yeah. Oh, hang no. on. Yeah, you're right. No. Was, was, color. Color. Yeah. About? was yeah. it? Okay. I, I just can't confirm off the top of my head. But what no, color no. was he? Was he said, it black and white, and Jeffro said, yep. And I go, dude, no, it's a color. I re immediately retract that. So, yeah, it's a color. Um, all right, so was he that color when in the film? No. Nah. No. Okay, so they did a, They did Robbie the Robot as an exclusive, and I'll talk about exclusives in a second, uh, but they did the chase. So they painted him metallic 60s pink. So yeah, he's not that color right with that. Yeah. <laughs> Look, they don't always get them right, um, and I actually kind of like the pink version more than I like the, the aqua version. So... Here's one of my gripes from collecting in general, but here's one for, from these guys. So if you have a look at that, that's Batgirl in blue and black and yellow. And here's Batgirl, the same figure in black, yellow, the same figure in blue and gray and yellow, and the same figure as Diamond. And the reason we can tell they're the same figure, if you have a look at the box, it all says 148. So it's mold 148, as we learned previously. Again, they did it with Batgirl. They did the third one, the number three mold, and they did the same figure four different times. Like, seriously, you can only do it so many times. Um, but then they cheat. So here's what I think they've done. They've got one mold and they've made two and stuck them in the box as twins. You mm -hmm. know, because why not? So you double your money. And this is the weird part. So a single pop costs you 20 bucks nowadays. Two pack cost you like 50. I was like, well, hang on, how does that work? It should be, you got two figures, same amount of box, two, mm -hmm. should be this, I don't know how they, they budget or work out their, their dollars, but um, in terms of here, I think they're cheating. Well, the marketing, uh, the 
marketing guys would have loved the Grady ones because they would have thought, oh, this is an absolute gimme. Two people are identical, put them in the one box. And, of course, it works for the movie because they're actually twins. So uh, that's just like a marketing goldmine, that one. Yeah. Uh, here's where cheating kind of works because Space Ghost does uh, have an ability on his wristband to actually become invisible. So, again, you could have just sent an empty box out, but um, you've got a, a slightly tinted with what looks like metallic bit inside uh, to make him look like he's invisible. Now, here's a question for you. This is actually for both for you guys. Isn't it better to have a variety and collectors can pick the one they want? That's a tricky one, Aaron, because sometimes collectors feel they're obligated to buy everything from a series. So mm -hmm. it's a bit of a, uh, a catch me too. Well, in actual fact, with the Batgirl ones, with these ones, I have all four. And the problem is I bought one. I got another one. I didn't realize that they were the same figure. Then I went, hang on, there's a third one in different color. And I was like, now what? Um, so it's just, it's confusing. And because their numbers aren't normal numbering systems, that's what happens. You know, you've got 140 and you think, well, do I have 140? Oh, yes, I do. No, I don't. And, and you can end up with doubles without realizing it. Um, this is where I think it's really cheating and really bugged me. They're metallic and yeah. they're in the same box, you know, and they've done it with, with Batman where they've had multicolors. They've done it with Phantom where they're multicolors. Metallics are the same, different. I just don't understand. You know, you, you've got one figure. Flash was never silver. You know, he was red or anti-flash is yellow, but to have a silver doesn't make any sense. But anyway, cheating in a sense where they are different in all senses of the word in terms of their color scheme. So you've got like a black and white version in the middle. You've got a sepia version down the bottom and the, the colored one at the top. Again, it's the same figure, the same number, 166, and just painted differently. Now, these are one-off pops in terms of they didn't come with any other figures. So Popeye at the top doesn't come with an olive oil or a Brutus. Um, Cap KV doesn't come with the the, the twins, or the Teen Angels, sorry, and no one else with Dudley Do-Right. The same with, and this goes for, for most of the Hanna-Barbera series, except for the Wacky Races. So there's no one else with Jabberjaw. Voltron doesn't come. There's not five more individual um, lines that turn into one giant lion. Uh, and Pinky and the Brain are obviously one-offs. Hey, speaking of one-offs, wouldn't it be funny if you contacted Funko and said, hey, can I do one-offs of the three of us? Put us in a box, just the three us it's, called the nerds. <laughs> it's <laughs> funny you should say that because you can actually buy a, uh, a blank template one so you can actually um, design it up yourself. God, yeah, that, and, hey. and there you go. There is one that you can actually design. It's a do-it-yourself pop vinyl. So, no, I don't have that much time on my hands to actually do one of each of us. But anyway. Okay. Now, here's my question, and here's I was waiting for Jeffro before when he's talking about the Flintstones. Is that in the top left-hand corner, the one you were talking about, the set of the two Flintstones? I'm not too sure, but I do know that the numbers were one and two. So... Okay. Um, it, that one up the top left, I don't think is it because I don't think it came out as a double pack. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's probably going to be the, one of those ones on the uh, the right hand side. Well, those are all variations of that right hand of that top left pack, so they're all different color variations, and it's just why. I, I again, it's we've talked about it with marketing and all that sort of stuff, but I, I just why. Speaking of wise, um, if they were to market a three pack of the three of us, I reckon you should call it this uh, from Claire. Absolutely. No! <laughs> <laughs> so, now I continue. Uh, special pops and con exclusive. So, you'll see a sticker on the front of a box which tells you where they're from and what they are and why they're exclusive. So, uh, the one on the left, which is one of the first ones, um, Batman 01 from one of the first molds, uh, which was Comic Con 2010. And the Chase Edition on the right-hand side. Again, it's the same mold, just molded years later. Uh, currently, there's a Huntress one from 2019's um, collection from, I think it was San Diego Comic Con again. So, And these are about 25 bucks at, at um, Zing and all that sort of stuff because they're slightly more, because they're a convention exclusive. Mm. There's no real reason for it. Otherwise, it just stuck a sticker on them and, and released them at that convention. I like this. This is for us. Yeah, we're the three stooges. Yeah, right. Oh, wise guy. Eh? <laughs> yeah. 
Now, sometimes there are special pops and they're for a good cause. Now, these have just been released or are just being released, the breast cancer awareness pops, and they're all done with pink colours. The only thing that I don't understand is why they didn't make Batgirl and Supergirl. You know, it's just I'm not sure why they did as Batman and Superman. Uh, there's been suggestion that it's because they're the most famous of these characters in the DC universe, but other than that, I don't know why. Um, I'm probably guessing these characters are uh, in the moment in the movies, whereas the characters you've mentioned aren't in the uh, current uh, lineup of movies. Well, um, Supergirl's had her own TV series for the last four or five years, and and Batgirl, well. There's a couple of animated versions going through the through the pipelines. Mm -hmm. um, Susie mentioned about if if I'm going to appear in anything, I've got to be in my uh, in the shirt, obviously. Uh, a limited edition version of me. Uh, the problem is, Susie, that uh, I may be already a limited edition, but I'm definitely not a rare collectible. So uh, <laughs> there we go. Move on. Um, some of the other pops that are special, where you come with a t-shirt. Now, there's a whole bunch of these out there, but uh, the Die Hard one I thought was very cool. Uh, the Skeletor one is just a new one that's just come out, and Sonic the Hedgehog came with a game box, apparently. So um, there's a whole bunch of these. You can Google any of these pictures. Just just Google Pops and look at the images, and you'll be there for days. Um, here's a question from Aaron. They should do a 2020 exclusives and bring back Vaulted Mask. Yeah, with face masks. Imagine that. You just re-release just about everything but put face masks on it. Wouldn't that be an absolute classic? Because in the future, they would be the rare collectible ones because people will remember, will forget about the whole COVID thing in decades to come. Mm. Now, here's a couple of weird ones. I don't know what these characters are or where they're from, and they just, well, Superman one looks like a super poo as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, Actually, you know I think that might be styled after Rick and Morty. I think that's where yeah. that's come from. Yeah, I don't know. They just look weird. Some of the other weird ones in a different sense are one-offs uh, or why they made them. So Mark Hamill and Joker outfit, uh, again, I don't know if you'd ever release like a Barbie doll version of, of um, Marilyn Monroe with the dress coming up. That just seems weird. Um, there's never been a figure of the Monopoly man that I'm aware of. He looks if good, though. Eh? It's not too bad. Um, or if you need a, a, a ringleader for a circus. Um, if you ever want your own MTV award and you can't sing, there's one for you. And again, a flashing gremlin. Like, I don't know. You'd never... <laughs> You could always have an a, a automated sort of gremlin that goes, whoosh, and whoosh, and whoosh, but I don't think that'd be a big seller. Um, the Alien series that came out, the Xenomorphs, they look weird to me. Uh, the one down the bottom, the face hugger, that actually looks good, but again, it's not one of those action figures you'd collect, you'd collect uh, um, as an action figure. Uh, other weird ones, they've released the Royal Family, a whole range of the Royal Family. They've released icons like George R. R. Martin, Dr. Seuss, Colonel Sanders, uh, Stan Lee, Rosie the Riveter, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Uncle Sam, and Benjamin Franklin, I guess, for the American market. Um, Jim Henson, as we mentioned, Edgar Allan Poe, why, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, uh, Albert Einstein, and a bunch of Mark Hamill ones. He's one of the only ones that have come up as, I think there's about six or seven of those that are Mark Hamill's, uh, mostly with the beard, so from the later years, obviously, apart from all the Luke figures. Here's a very cool, weird one. It's the tw it's the 10-inch Stay Puft, so you could actually have the four Ghostbusters that we saw before, all been marshmallowed, and him in the background. You can interpret this any way you want. I like this one from Aaron, they've done a ghoulie. Uh, don't ghoulies go into the, to <laughs> into the toilet? <laughs> uh, I saw Aaron, but, um, yeah, have your own fun with that one. Uh, yeah. Some of the other weird ones, they've just released or are about to release the McDonald's ones. And mm. the Grimace is kind of cool. The Mayo McCheese looks right. Um, uh, actually, they actually look normal. They look fine. Um, you've got Colonel Sanders with bucket and without bucket. You've got mm. the Icy Bear, which was, if you remember, from Slurpees. He was the Slurpee mascot. Uh, you've got Toucan Sam down the bottom on the right. And you've got the Cheetos Cheetah um, at the top right. Now, here you go. From smallest to biggest, the uh, one-inch um, Ant-Man to the three-inch to the six-inch to the ten-inch to the 19-inch. So there you go. And I think that looks very cool. 
They're all in mm. a row. They're all the size. And you could actually have that, that look where he goes and grows or shrinks or whatever the case is. But it's a very, very cool setup. But again, there's five different pops. Go to that guy's house yep. and take one and just hide it somewhere and just watch him stress out. <laughs> now, this is a very large pop. This is larger than 18, uh, 19 inches. Uh, and it's in one of, one of the stores somewhere. As for how tall it is, I don't know. I think it's about three feet or more. But that brings us on to some of the other cool pops that we've got. So they brought out the Universal uh, Monsters in both uh, black and white and metallic. And I've got to say, the metallic don't look too bad either. They brought out uh, Little Old Predator and the Camouflage Predator. And, of course, to have a bit of fun, you've got to have Daredevil in a chicken suit because why not? Now, there are questions as to how many is too many. Now, that's a that's one web page of of um, dead uh, Deadpool's, and they're all different pretty much. That's one page of Batman's, and they're pretty much all different. Now, I did a bit of research, and my numbers aren't exactly accurate, but it's as accurate as I can make it because, uh, rough counting, there are 115 different Batman by himself, not including villains, not including double packs or anything like that. We're talking single figures, and there are about 71 different Deadpool's, and they're the two biggest ranges that I can see in terms of these figures currently how to store your pops now this is a very cool idea in the states they have a thing called baseball cases and what you do is you get a baseball bat and you get it autographed by your favorite player and you stick it in a in a case that is just big enough to put it in and they sit up on your wall and that's the single one at the top and the one down the bottom is all of them but with leds at the top and they look very cool because they're all pretty much inbuilt display cabinets I'll tell you what is cool um, we've got someone watching from California, so there you go. Should be the middle of the day over there. So uh, hi there. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this craziness that we've got going on over here. So uh, there you go. Our show spreads far and wide, as does our nerdiness and our tragicness. So uh, there you go. This is another way to store your pops. They're all there. If you have a look down the very bottom row, they're actually the heads with the cars. Uh, so you can actually get a scale of what, what that is in terms of uh, sizes of different Funko products. Now, here's how not to store your pops. Jeffro, have you got any comments on this? Yeah, well, I only have a limited amount of space, so I created a uh, six-foot wall of um, <laughs> uh, pop vinyls, and they stayed there very successfully for an awful long time until one day, I don't know what happened, but um, we had a little boo-boo. So... Um, <laughs> Needless to say that I haven't stacked the six-foot wall uh, as it is uh, originally. I've now sort of separated. So it's basically a three-foot wall with um, uh, two rows. So uh, uh, fortunately, there wasn't really any great damage. But because uh, I'm such a cheap ass, I don't usually buy pop protectors. That They're the, those uh, clear boxes that help uh, protect it. But uh, it said there's probably a case of... At the time when I was looking at that, thinking, "Yeah, should have should have spent the extra money, and uh, maybe they wouldn't have fallen over." But um, yeah. So what happened to your wall? Is it lost its structural integrity? And I like what Aaron has said. Uh, put them all into a spare room until you can't get into the spare room anymore. So I reckon that's definitely uh, something to live by. I like that one. All you need, uh, Jeffro, is just a tube of glue, and I think it'll be right to go. <laughs> Stick them back. It's good again. It um, it has curtailed my spending a bit because, as I said, I'm sort of running out of space, so I'm being very selective in what I buy. I never used to be like that. That happens, I guess. Um, Aaron, who's on and who we just saw a quote from, Aaron is a collector of all sorts of things, and I think it was last year when you were overseas, Aaron, when you went to Disneyland and all those sort of places, he obviously went to the Pop, um, to the Funko headquarters. Now, if you notice this, that's a six-inch... Wampa, and so Aaron's about this tall. Um, he's a very short man. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Aaron's Aaron's a full size grown man. Dude. Uh, yep, dude, and that's obviously a ten foot version of uh, of the Wampa. Um, he was also part of the the dynamic duo. He's curly, so this is a very cool sort of Batman picture and. Um, yeah, it's actually somewhere I think I'd be curious to go to, dude, because it's got a Batman theme sort of 
car you can sort of sit in what looks like a badly designed Lego car. But um, now this is one unfortunate kid or it's Aaron's son just happens to be at the wrong place at the wrong time in the middle of a big battle. So um, yeah, I'm guessing this is another stage of the Funko building and what looks like the gift shop where you can buy all your large Funko figures, <clears throat> including a Tauntaun. That looks pretty cool. And I think I'm all popped out, gentlemen. Have you guys got any final figures, questions, queries, antidotes? Very well done. Uh, that was really enjoyable. And, um, yeah, that was um, – I learned some stuff and I didn't think I was going to learn anything. Me, uh, we're talking about Aaron uh, being in the picture. Uh, yeah, is that an Aaron action figure? Well, you never know. I mean, uh, you, you never know what's going to pop up you know, in the future. So uh, there you go. So cool dudes get produced in Funko. Very, very cool. So there you go. And hang on, guys. You're still here. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> Pop finals too. Well, we don't have that kind of money. And if you're expecting Sammy Jackson showing up at an eye patch and a saucy little leather, leather number, go. I'll tell you what, though. Um, There's certainly a lot of opportunities for some really, really inappropriate jokes when it came to the whole six inch and 10 inch and all this sort of stuff. And when you had the the what do you call it the um, the gremlin flashing and all the rest of it and I just I just thought straight away it's like oh this and what if he comes in at six inches and you know I'm glad I kind of didn't say that but then having said that I just said that um all right so we've actually got eighteen people watching us right now and hopefully eighteen people don't just suddenly leave us because that would be pretty disastrous uh, they, so hopefully everybody stick around for a little while longer sorry was it dude they pop off. They pop off, yeah. But, yeah, so it just goes to show just how big uh, the phenomenon is. And, of course, it's only just going to get bigger as the decades roll on. So uh, there you go. Who knows what will be popping up. And we may have this presentation again in the future when we go, why on earth did they release that? So there you go. Very, oh, there you go. Oh, Michelle's got this figured out quite nicely. Dork. Now, who's, I don't know who she's pointing that at, but <laughs> maybe all three of us. Yeah, so that way. <laughs> The thing with that is when I was doing the research for it, I could probably do a presentation on each of the topics we discussed. So on each of those slides, I could actually probably do a presentation based on it because the, the phenomenon is so big now. You know, like if you remember, dude, back in about, what was it, 95 when they released the 500th Batman figure, you know, now they released 117 pops or whatever it is or, you know, quite 150 different Batman versions. How many Batman figures are there in the world that are, you know, in that sort of series? You know, there's got to be close to a thousand because of, you know, the numbers went up because of this. So, and Deadpool figures went from, you know, like 10 to, to like 100 now because of all the pops that they've created. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed the show. See you all next week. Don't forget, forget the curfew. Stay here with us. Just because you can go out an hour really doesn't mean a damn thing or an hour longer. Uh, so, there you go. All right. So, we're going to buzz off. And uh, as always, Lads, what do you reckon? Stay nerdy? Stay nerdy. Stay nerdy. Okay. All right. See you next week. <laughs> Bye.